Now, Sweden's been helping America's NSA to spy on Russian leaders and provided Washington with a list of high-profile targets. Swedish state TV site documents leaked by whistleblower Edward Snowden. Well, let's go live now to RT's Peter Oliver, who has got more details for us. Uh, Peter, what exactly is emerging here? Well, these latest leaked documents uh, look into the Swedish National Defence Radio Establishment, and that's known as the, the FRA. That monitors uh, communications in the Swedish uh, intelligence service. Now, it claims that, uh, that the FRA were looking into high-priority Russian targets. This includes leadership and inter internal political figures. Now, it's unclear from the documents that have been put forward whether senior leaders like Vladimir Putin or anybody else had their private communications listened into and we've tried to contact both the FRA and uh, President Putin's spokesperson both of them saying they don't comment on these type of matters. Now, a separate document that was released was uh, was d addressed to NSA personnel that were working with the Swedes, and it told them that they should thank Sweden for the uh, continued work on the Russian target. Now, all of this coming out showing that, that Sweden is just another part of the system of this, this widespread global NSA spying programme that seems to be to looking into many other countries and has many other countries working as partners with it. And this information, of course, comes out on the same day as it's been revealed that the NSA tracks the mobile phone records of five billion people per day. Those mobile phone records, of course, would allow you to know where somebody was moving around the world. So it seems that months after we first heard from the leaks of Edward Snowden, revelations continue to come out this time, showing that Sweden was helping the NSA to spy on Russia. Yeah, it is a fascinating development. Thank you very much. That's uh, RT's Peter Oliver. Well, we can bring in uh, British investigative journalist Paul Lashmar now to talk more about this story. There he is. Mr Lashmar, thank you very much for coming on to the programme. Now, I mean, all this is yet to be verified, but if it does prove to be true, how much of a controversy could this blow into? Well, it won't help the relationship between Sweden and Russia. I think what's going on here is we, we, we've, always, we've known for a long while that the Swedish um, SIGINT capability is quite um, developed. Uh, it's, it's worked a lot with the British intelligence in the past. But as with all things to do with Edward Snowden's documents, there's one thing for experts on the outside thinking, Oh, what, you know, suspecting that we are under all, all sorts of surveillance. It's quite another when we actually start to get the evidence, when we start to get the evidence, and that we realise the sheer scale, which I think exceeds the expectations of virtually anybody. The, the sheer scale of international mass surveillance on individuals, governments, and uh, anybody that they take an interest in. And wouldn't it also surprise many people, do you think, that Sweden is actually involved in this because they have not been involved in any revelations so far? So presumably many would be surprised, yourself may be included, that they are involved in this snooping. Well, it's been known on those who take an interest that Sweden has a, cap a good capability and it has been locked in, it has worked with GCHQ certainly in the past. But I think this really sort of ups the game, the fact that we're talking about unique... It, it, the document describes them as providing new, unique insight into what's going on in Russia. And what about the timing of these leaks? Is that significant in any way? Well, that's hard to tell. I mean, um, I, I, I don't... I, it seems to me that uh, the um, way that the Snowden material is coming out is, um, is incremental. But whether it's timed, it's very hard to tell because it's hard to know when the journalists who were you know, the Swedish um, uh, TV journalists who did this, when they got the documents and what, how long it's taken them to verify the information that they've got. So it's very hard to judge whether something is premeditated for a particular effect. Uh, and in terms of ramifications, again, we can only speculate. But what do you think about the relationship between Russia and Sweden now? Because they have been cooperating on many projects, including those in the Arctic region. Uh, could they be in jeopardy, do you think? Well, it's always this, but everybody knows everybody spies on everybody <laughs> else. We, we, we don't know the extent. And I think that what we've discovered in the last few months is just the sheer scale of it. 
So, you know, and, it, and it's quite a different, it's a, it sort of puts things in a different uh, position when you know for certain that another country is looking into your country. Uh, and I think, you know, that, that so it may have an impact. I don't suspect the Russian government's going to be best pleased to see this material. And it, it you know, it may feed into, you know, it may cause a bad diplomatic um, fallout ultimately. And in terms of you mentioned there about the wide scale of this snooping, I mean, how far can it stretch? I mean, they, they can literally follow people's mobile phones and pick up conversations on all cell phones. I mean, wh where can it end? Well, what we now know is that the US, aided by a number of countries, including Britain, Sweden, Canada, are engaged in mass surveillance on a scale that we are, are hitherto that we really wouldn't have thought was possible, except in... Uh, you know, science fiction accounts. I mean, the sh sheer scale of it is absolutely phenomenal. And how much of that do you think is intentional? The NSA, for example, says that it's not tracking uh, people's movement intentionally, but it does happen to get location data from all their mobile phones. Um, and they say that that is also legal. I mean, what's your view on that? Well, is it, is it legal? I mean, it's, this is all up in the air. Uh, so what, if it was accidental, why were they doing it? They don't collect this stuff for nothing. What are they looking for exactly? What are the implications? What do they do with it? How long do they store it? All these questions are up in the air. Is it legal? Well, one gets very mixed messages from the United States uh, about the legality of this. Uh, you know, the, the agencies... Um, uh, say they're doing things legally, but then you see senior congressmen saying, whoa, I didn't know they were doing that, and I'm on one of the committees. But, you know, my 30 years of experience tells me that the whole thing with intelligence agencies, if you give them a mission and you allow them to conduct their business in secret, the mission creeps. They, they always expand. It's in their innate nature. That's why they have to be incredibly tightly regulated and have, you know, major oversight. And I think we're beginning to see that oversight hasn't worked in these all these countries. OK, we do have to leave it there, but thank you very much. That's uh, Paul Lashmar from Brunel University. Thank you.